Welcome back to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny. Today we're going to be doing some black and red snapper on the Golden's cast iron mini Kamado. First, let's start by talking about the setup. I'm going to be using the Golden's cast iron brand of lump charcoal and the large Weber kettle chimney starter. And I'm just going to fill that up about halfway. It's going to get that chimney starter lit and then wait for it to ash over. Once it's ashed over, we can then put it into the Golden's cast iron mini Kamado. Want to be sure and spread those coals out a little just for some even heat distribution. And now I'll start putting the Kamado together. First I'll put the grates in and then the sear plate because that's where we're going to cook our blackened red snapper. I want to bring the sear plate up to temp really slow. So I'm going to leave the screen on the bottom vent shut and then just open the bottom vent probably about three quarters of an inch. Now I'll make sure that I have the top vent open about half an inch to three quarters of an inch as well. Now let's prepare our red snapper. We're using really fresh red snapper. The red snapper that I bought is from Katie's down in Galveston, Texas. Uh, they harvest their own red snapper. So you know it's really fresh. I had them fillet it and skin it for me. Once you get home, you just want to feel the red snapper and make sure that they didn't leave any bones or scales on it. While the pit is coming up to temp, I'm going to go ahead and melt some butter. Now once that butter is melted, I'll pour it right over the fish and then make sure the entire fish is well coated. Seasoning I'm going to be using today is the Savory Spice Cajun Blackening Seasoning. This is a paprika based seasoning that is kind of bittersweet and peppery and it has some nice herbs in it. Now we'll get one side of the red snapper seasoned and just never mind the wind that's blowing it everywhere. We'll season the other side when we put it on the sear plate. Now we don't want the sear plate blazing hot. Between 375 and 395 is a really good temperature to do this at. So it's hot enough to blacken the uh, red snapper. Not so hot that we can't leave it on there for the duration of the cook. Now I'll just get some of that butter and pour it right onto the sear plate. And then just lay that red snapper on the sear plate, seasoned side down. And now we'll go ahead and season the top of that filet. And then we're just going to kind of let it fry there on the sear plate. Not going to close the lid. As we're watching our fish, there are some uh, visual cues that we can use to tell how far along the fish is while it's cooking. The first one is we want to take a look at the edges of the fish. When you start seeing them turn white, that's your first cue to know that your fish is starting to cook through. Another one of our cues is just kind of lift the fish up and take a look under it to see how dark your blackening seasoning is getting. And on that side, I left it there for six minutes. Here's a six minute clip compressed down to eight seconds. And you can see the fish is kind of like seizing up and shrinking. Now that our edges are white and underneath is the color that we want, it's time to flip our fish. Now. I'd say this side is looking pretty good. That's exactly the color I wanted it to be. Now the side that is now up took six minutes. The other side will not take six minutes. That's gonna be more of a four to five minute cook because we were letting the side that we fried first, that's gonna be our presentation side. We cooked that to the color that we liked. Once we flip it, well, that's just going to cook it the rest of the way through. So they won't be down an equal amount of time. And all we're now doing is checking for doneness. Now, when you flip it, there will be some cracks that develop. And that's the perfect place for you to check on the doneness of your fish. Now in this larger crevice, you can see there is still a little gray area in the fish. And that's the part that is not quite done. Now, a lot of people will take their fish off right now, okay? And that's perfectly fine. But I like my fish cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna leave it on just for about a minute longer. And for me, once I see the juices starting to run clear, like in this shot, that's when I take my fish off. But if you like your fish a little less done than that, then take your fish out when the juice is still slightly cloudy. 
one final test for me to see how done the fish is. It's kind of like this bounce test. Look at how much bounce this fish still has in it. That means you know it's not solid and it's not dried out. So right now is the perfect time for me to take off this fish. Now I get that on the plate and let it rest. And that's going to give us two or three minutes to make this sauce. Honestly, this would probably be a lot easier to do inside, but what fun is that? So I brought out my cast iron pan and set it on the grill so that it can preheat. Now when making a sauce like this, you're going to want all the ingredients ready to go. So I have everything already sitting aside in little bowls. So let's go over the ingredients for our lemon butter sauce. If you're fancy, it's a beurre blanc two tablespoons of heavy cream, about a teaspoon of shallots and half a teaspoon of garlic, chopped tomatoes, green onions, and parsley, quarter cup of white wine, and a quarter cup of lemon juice, some salt and pepper to taste. Now the butter, it's been in the refrigerator staying cold because there's some food science stuff that says when you do a sauce like this, the butter has to be cold. So don't have the butter sitting out until it's ready to use. Also have your butter chopped into these little cubes because we're adding the butter in stages, not all at one time. Now my cast iron pot is preheated. Let's start making this sauce. I'm just gonna throw the shallots and the garlic right into that dry pan. Next, I'll put in the white wine and then I'll put in the lemon juice. And after that, I'll put in the heavy cream and just stir that around a little bit. Now at this stage, all we're gonna do is condense our liquids. We're gonna let a lot of this burn off, right? And we're gonna reduce everything to about a quarter. One of the ways I tell when the liquid is ready is by looking at the tops of the vegetables that we cut up. Once the vegetables are resting on the uh, bottom of the pan and they're standing a little proud of the uh, liquid, that's usually my sign as to when to start adding the butter. And to be sure, my last little check is to get my rubber spatula, run it across the bottom of the pan, and if the liquids don't immediately come back together, that's another way to tell if your liquid is ready for the butter. Now we just need to start adding our butter. I'm just gonna get three or four of those little cubes, throw them into the pan, and the key here is to not have a stagnant pan. You want your pan moving constantly, and I prefer to move the pan. Now you know when to add your next handful of butter in is when you see the butter that you previously added is more than halfway melted. So once that butter is more than halfway melted, grab another little handful and throw it in. Once that's halfway melted, grab another little handful and throw it in, always keeping the pan moving. Now that I have my last butter in, I'm going to get some of those herbs, get a good pinch, throw it in right in the pan. I'm gonna keep that pan moving, but I'm gonna finish the rest of this off of the heat. I still have that butter in there that needs to melt. Now I'm gonna get my spatula and start just melting the rest of that butter. And now is a good time to salt and pepper to taste. It's the last thing I do because I want this sauce done before I decide how much salt and pepper to put into it. The thing about this sauce is you want to use it as soon as you make it because it does have the tendency to break if you let it sit out for too long. And that one stick of butter probably makes enough sauce for four servings of fish. I'm just going to pour the sauce straight out of the pot right over my fish. All right, now we'll just look at it for a few seconds and then cut a piece off and try it. Here's a little close-up shot and you can really see how silky smooth this sauce is. Now, the thing about this butter sauce is that by itself, it's good, but on something, it's a hell of a lot better. Oh man. And then from that point on, I just went ahead and ate the rest of that fish right there on camera. It was incredibly good. Now, if you haven't already subscribe to my channel, why not? Go ahead and do that now. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.